This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. Let's talk Homeland. Or more specifically, the TV series called Homeland. Although it's yet another show about government workers and doesn't really contain a liberty message in it, it's got to be my third favorite show on television. The thing that is so fascinating about it to me is the effect that it has on me. I find that against all my better angels, or maybe because of all my better angels, I, I find myself caring a great deal about these CIA operatives. And, and it makes me wonder, you know, to what extent CIA operatives really are like the people in this film, in this series. Uh, the best television always does a really good job of, of bringing humanity to bad guys or bringing so much realism to good guys that you, everybody kind of turns out being a shade of gray. My guess is there are probably people who watch Homeland and root for completely different people in the series. I find myself rooting for pretty much all of them with the exception of one or two of the terrorists. Well, maybe 10 or 20 of the terrorists, but this main character uh, and her protege are, are just the ones that that really appeal to me. There's a, a young field operative who's brilliant and she is driven and flawed and she's got these various Achilles heels that make her weaker and yet stronger. And her ultimate motive is to keep innocents from being, being killed or government people from being killed. I find myself sometimes wondering whether that aspect of the series is really realistic. When you think about security bureaucracies, I think throughout history and certainly throughout the world now, they're basically sort of just the institutions that run the country, right? They don't really, I don't think they really do what their mission is technically supposed to be. I think it has something to do with just the fact that when you collect enough information, you have the power. But when you watch these conflicts between people, you know, as to whether, whether to torture someone or, you know, whether it's right, I hope that conversation actually does occur in the CIA and they don't all think it's right. You know, certainly uh, there are CIA operatives that one can, to, you know, be pretty sympathetic toward who are real life CIA, CIA operatives. I kind of liked the, uh, the old, uh, DCI back in uh, the 70s, uh, Colby, you know, he seemed like, a straight shooter's not the word I would use, but uh, he seemed like a guy who really had good intentions and a realization of his own limits. So he was in charge just for, I guess, a couple of years under the Ford administration. And then there was, uh, I guess it was John Stockwell, who was a sort of a CIA dissident. He left the organization and denounced it. And I guess he was never killed. Isn't that great? But anyway, as as I watch these uh, these depictions of internal bureaucratic fights over how badly to treat people, I do get a sense uh, for the humanity that's there at all levels of government and in all, and in all kinds of people. I guess I got the same sense when I watched uh, the movie Downfall, which was, I think, a, a very measured and historically researched uh you know, chronicle of Hitler's last days, right? But you watch that film, and you can you can find yourself sympathizing with ninety percent of those Nazis if you're human, because their humanity shows through. Now you don't sympathize with everything they're trying to do, but you want them to survive. You don't want them to have an arm blown off. You you hope the sentence they get from the Soviets is not too long. I suspect that uh, you know, to the extent that we get to know government people better. And don't just treat them as a, a faceless entity or concept. We're going to find that same humanity uh, inside the American fascist state. It, it seems that it's, it's missing almost nowhere. So, anyway, I guess I'll continue to watch Homeland and continue to look forward to the day when they do more than just depict the government as something other than white hats. When they go a little further and actually... 
give the idea of real freedom some place in the film. All they gotta do is mention Ron Paul, right? It's the same thing with uh, uh, the, the the series called um, Scandal. It's just as good. Uh, it's got a lady working on it who was in the Bush administration, and uh, I mean, it, it, it holds no bars in showing the degree the government will go to uh, to hurt people. Uh, depicting a lot of torture, and and yet the film never once, there's no character that ever appears in the film that holds libertarian values of really any kind. It's like they're just the, the elephant in the room that's never talked about, and that's the same way in both shows. So, while it seems like America is, you know, going through a golden age of of television, uh, at least if you include cable, uh, that's something that just needs to be there. I mean, the best I can think of is in, in, in Breaking Bad, there was just that brief moment where there was a character in the, in the series who was a libertarian, uh, and there was a, you know, like a shot of a Ron Paul bumper sticker somewhere in there, and nothing else was ever done with it, you know. He never had a chance to get his views across in the series or anything like that. He was like he was almost a nobody in the series. That's what needs to happen in American television. If you really want to accurately depict what's going on in America, you show one of the elephants that's in the American room. There's a huge and loud movement out there, and it just doesn't seem to be making it into America's television drama yet. Thank God, a little soul-searching about the country is. Oh, I should have mentioned there's something else I like about Homeland, and that is the fact that it doesn't really tend to demonize Muslims. I always appreciate that. Remember, I'm a little like a sloppy George Orwell. Orwell's ideology was shaped by the Spanish Civil War, and mine was shaped by the Bosnian Civil War. Demonizing Muslims is a big hot-button pisser offer for me. No, nope. can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM Feds don't want you to hear them.